Hi, this is Katie Barker. We're at Katie Girl's Restaurant in Springfield. This is our first video blog. Uh, we're going to be doing this bi-weekly, so come check us out. I'll try to let everybody know at the restaurant when they're going to be, so you know when to check it out. Um, we're calling this Let's Get Real because uh, everybody who knows me and hang hangs out here knows that I'm kind of not really into like pretentious sort of like, you know, need eight forks to eat the meal kind of food. So <clears throat> I don't think people realize that a lot of the favorite foods they eat every day, you know, are all made with the same sort of basic principles that stuff is in like gourmet restaurants. So today we're going to start out by showing you how to make homemade donuts. Because a lot of people think a uh, donut's a donut, and like no cop jokes aside, uh, you know they really do. They're kind of involved. They have a big process, and they're really great to make homemade. So we're going to start out by making the dough. And there are two kinds of donuts: there are yeast donuts and cake donuts. Today we're making yeast because I like them better, and it's my blog. So okay, <clears throat> we're making a beignet dough instead of a regular donut dough. And beignets are a New Orleans style donut. Maybe you've seen them on TV before. They're kind of like triangle diamond sort of shaped, okay? And I just think the dough's a lot softer and better and I just like it. So we're going with that. Okay, yeast doughs are pretty similar. They all start out with yeast, okay? And most of them have a little sugar, water, stuff like that. Okay, so this is yeast. This is active dry yeast, okay? You can use fresh yeast if you want, but it's kind of hard to find. Uh, and the ratios are different. So for this recipe, use the active dry. Put it in the bottom of a bowl, and use a bowl that you got some room to work with, OK? And uh, also, yeast needs something to feed on to kind of get it going. So that's sugar, OK? It likes sugar, just like everybody else. All right, so I've got yeast and sugar in there. And right here, I've got three cups of warm water. And you want it to be like, I don't know, I think they say like 110 degrees or something. I don't know. I don't really mess with it. I just stick my finger in there, and if it's warmer than lukewarm, but not so hot it burns me, it's pretty good, okay? And you want it pretty warm because you're usually going to do this in like a metal bowl or a ceramic bowl, and when that water hits the bowl, it's going to cool down a lot, okay? So have it a little bit warmer than you think you need. I got a wooden spoon here, and the warm water will kind of dissolve the little pellets of yeast, so just kind of stir it until it's mostly dissolved, but if you still have a few little chunkies, it's not a big deal. All right, so before we go any further, our yeast needs to sit for about five or ten minutes, and it'll kind of get activated because of that warm water and that sugar, and it'll get a big like foam cap on it, and that's how you know the yeast is alive and working. So if it's not alive and working after ten minutes and it's just kind of sitting there, you probably killed it, and that means your water's too hot, so start over. While we're waiting for our yeast to get going and get all foamy and nice, I want to talk to you about something called mise en place. And that's French for pretty much get your craft together before you start so you're not screwed later on when you're burning your pastry cream because you're looking for a whisk that you forgot to get out. Okay? Just a good principle to have together. Whatever you're making, read through your recipe first or if you've made it before even. Just kind of get all your utensils out and get everything ready to go so you know you're prepared. And cooking goes a lot faster that way too. That's how in restaurants people are able to get stuff out so fast is because they have everything out ready to go. Okay. So it's been about 10 minutes in blog world. Okay, don't pay attention to this different bowl. And I've got some yeast here, and it's just got the yeast, the flour, and the water, or I'm sorry, the yeast, the sugar, and the water, okay? See how it's gotten really nice and foamy? It's got that big foam cap on it? That's what you're wanting, and that way you know your yeast is alive and active, okay? And like I said, if you don't have that nice foam cap, it's probably dead, so start again. Okay, to this, I'm going to add some evaporated milk. Okay, this is an enriched dough, like French bread or something like that, how it's kind of chewy. And it's not really dry, but it just doesn't have a lot of moistness to it. That's because it's uh, called a straight dough. And it doesn't have any like enriched ingredients that have a lot of fat in it, like milk and eggs and stuff like that. And that's why like donuts are softer and uh, because they have the, the fat in it and it's worked a little bit less. Okay, so this is some evaporated milk. You can use regular milk if you want. I just like evaporated milk better. There's about a cup there. And then, let's see, what else do I have? I got a couple of eggs somewhere. Okay, two eggs. Okay, let's crack them right in there. And I should have some salt. Okay, now salt you'll find in every yeast dough recipe. And you don't want a lot, you just want a little bit because it's supposed to be a sweet dough. And uh, you put salt in there because salt actually controls the yeast. If you didn't have any salt in there and you had a yeast dough, 
it would be like all over, like you see on TV, you know, Urkel forgets to, you know, put salt in the yeast dough and it boils over, okay? That's what the yeast is in there for. It lets it just raise so much, but not too much, okay? So I'm gonna take my wooden spoon and I'm gonna stir this up. So we got our yeast, our sugar, water, some evaporated milk and some eggs, okay? And just kind of whip it up. I like to use a wooden spoon when I'm making yeast doughs just cause, I don't know, I think it brings it together better without getting too messy. Okay, <clears throat> right here I got seven cups of flour. Now flour in a yeast dough recipe is always kind of optional. Like if it's real humid out, you won't need as much. If it's pretty dry out, like in the winter time, you may need a little less. So I would just put in like half my flour. And I'm gonna stir this together until it kind of is like a smooth paste, okay? Also good if you're wallpapering. All right. Now this recipe doubles well if you're making it for a lot of people. This will make, it depends on how big you make your beignets, but this recipe will probably make about 20 nice sized ones or about 40, 50 real small ones. Okay, see we just kind of got like a paste right there, okay? Now I got some softened butter. You can use Crisco or something if you want. I just use butter because I had it laying around. That's just about a quarter cup of that. It's just gonna make our dough, you know, nice and soft and tasty, okay? And you want it really good and soft because you just want to be able to stir it and it'll kind of break up and, and go into the dough. And if you still have a few little chunkies of it, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to add the rest of my flour. Okay, you're going to stir this together. And I, I always have some additional flour because it seems like this recipe always needs a little bit. But less is more. If you add too much, you can't take it out. And you also have a big, like, hard, doughy mess. That's not good. Okay. So now I got my extra flour. <clears throat> and I always keep my extra flour in like a one cup measuring cup, just so I can kind of keep tabs on how much extra I'm putting in there. Okay? And you want this to be kind of a loose, soft dough. The idea is when you're done with it, it should be soft but not sticky. Like you should be able to put your hand on it and pull it off and then sticks to you. But it should be really soft. So when it's about like this, okay, kind of a shaggy mess. You're gonna take your extra flour, put it onto the work surface, okay? Fold it out, and then you're just gonna add a little more flour on top, you're just gonna knead it, okay? Until it's smooth, and like I said, it doesn't stick to the table or your hands, but it's still really soft. And it'll be just like a smooth dough, okay? So you're gonna take that dough, spray a bowl, or a metal bowl, or pan, or whatever, with uh, some Pam, put the dough in there, Put a wet towel over it and that just keeps the top from getting that nasty little crust. Put it in the fridge, let it raise in the fridge overnight. You can do it like on your countertop if you're in a hurry, but that's called fermentation, the fermentation stage. And a yeast dough really gets most of its flavor during that fermentation. So the longer you can make it last, the better it's gonna taste. So that's why we raise via the fridge, okay? So over here, I've got my dough that's been raising overnight. Okay, let me get my crap out of the way. All right, moist towel. Here's the dough. No, I cut half of it off earlier, so don't pay attention to that. But it, uh, it's not like a, a bread dough where it really has a lot of big bubbles in it. It's kind of like dense and soft. And see how I touch it and it's sticky, but it doesn't stick to my hand, okay? So what you're gonna do, so you're going to take some more extra flour, put it down, and don't be scared to use a lot of flour when you're rolling it out. Just be scared when you're working it into the dough. But this we're not working it in, we just don't want it to stick. Put some more on top, okay. And beignet dough feels kind of like almost spongy. It's kind of weird. So just keep that in mind. If it feels spongy, you're doing it right. Don't freak you out, okay. So I should have a rolling pin around here somewhere rolling pin. You're going to roll it out just till it's about a quarter inch thick or so. And these really, they get not quite double in size when you're raising them. But then when you put them into the hot oil, they really poof up. Okay. And if you were baking bread in the oven, that's called the oven spring. So we're affectionately calling it the fryer spring. Okay. And it doesn't have to be exact. You know, it's no big deal. Just try to keep it an even thickness. All right, and one thing that's gonna happen when you uh, put this in the fridge overnight, 
So a lot of the times if people uh, just let it raise on their countertop, they try to roll it out before it's risen enough. And the dough kind of springs back on you when you're trying to roll it out. But if you put it in the fridge, all that gluten gets really rested and relaxed, and it'll just roll right out for you, okay? And something I didn't show you is you know when it's risen enough, if you poke your finger in it and the finger hole doesn't fill back in, okay? That's how you know it's risen enough, okay? Now, I like to cut these with my pizza cutter. You can use a knife if you want, but you'll screw up your table, and uh, they just, it'll dull your knife, and it's just not a good situation, okay? So, in honor of the beignets that we're patterning this off of, we're going to cut these into big triangle shapes, okay? All right. So we're going to take one strip here, like that, then a straight one, triangle, then a straight one, then a triangle, okay? So we're about like that. Now you're going to put these on a sheet pan that you're going to spray with Pam, and then put flour down and then put them on there because you really don't want to, when you pick them up to put them in the fryer, you don't want them to stick and you pull and then you'll kill all that, those gases that have made that rise, all right? So make sure it's not going to stick by spraying your pan, putting flour down. Okay, so I have got some oil that's heating up over here and get my beignet dough out of the way. Okay. Always be careful when you're using hot oil, okay? A lot of bad stuff can happen. So I've got some beignets over here that have already risen, okay? See that? They're not quite double the thickness, okay? So we're just going to do a test one and see if it's hot enough, okay? And that looks like it's going to be pretty good. Now, if your beignet floats, that's how you know your oil's hot enough. If it sinks to the bottom, your oil's not hot enough. You should fry them at about 350, 360 degrees. Just get a little candy thermometer, stick it on the side of the pan, and uh, that'll do the trick for you. Okay, so while we're frying these, we're gonna take a little break and we'll come back when they're done. All right, so we'll see you in a minute. We're just getting ready to pull our beignets slash donuts out of the oil. They're nice and golden brown, and see I've only got a couple of in there. You can probably do three or four, but you wanna give them plenty of room to move around, okay, or else they'll start to stick. All right, so as soon as they're golden brown, they pop to the surface, they're done. And remember we talked about mise en place earlier, having all your stuff together. I've got a little uh, tray here lined with paper towels to drain them on, okay? So pull those out. While those are cooling off, and we don't want them to get too cool because donuts are always best to eat warm, but while they're just resting for a minute, I'm gonna make a little cream filling for them. Get our oil out of the way here. Always be careful when you're getting rid of hot oil. Uh, use hot pads and have a place ready to set it down so you don't know, you know, you're walking around with hot oil, don't know where to put it, you spill it on yourself, it's not a good situation, okay? So we're gonna make our little cream filling. I got a skillet here. And in this skillet, I'm gonna put some sugar, just enough to sweeten our milk, okay? Not a lot, maybe like half a cup. And I'm gonna use half cream and half milk. You can buy half and half if you want. I just don't use it at the restaurant, so I always make my own. If I can get the cream open, okay. We're not making a lot, because we're just filling a few donuts. But this is a recipe that you can get that, you know, it'll just multiply really well. And pastry cream is just kind of like a fancy name for vanilla pudding, all right? And it's a good base for anything. We're actually gonna make a mocha flavored cream and so we're having coffee and donuts, okay? I'm gonna turn this on fairly high. In the meantime, while that's going on, right here I've got some egg yolks, probably like, I don't know, three or four, just the yolk. Uh, you don't wanna use the white because it tends to uh, curdle in there and make like scrambled eggs and that's not good. To this, I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla, okay? I'm gonna add some cornstarch couple tablespoons. You want it to be pretty thick, like, like a Bavarian cream filled donut, okay? I don't like those whipped cream filled donuts, I don't know. I'm not a fan. And I'm also going to add some coffee grounds to this. We're just going to add the grounds right to it. Uh, you won't notice them when you're eating it. And 
Uh, it looks kind of cool. Some people are like, oh, are those vanilla beans? No, they're coffee grounds. Okay, little coffee grounds. Okay, cornstarch tends to lump. So if it's lumping up on you, just add a little bit more milk to it and it'll smooth out for you. Never add a hot liquid to cornstarch though, because then it'll really lump up on you and won't be able to get it smooth. And when you add liquid and cornstarch together to thicken something, it's called a slurry. So if you're ever watching TV or reading a recipe and somebody says use a cornstarch slurry, it just means cornstarch and a cold liquid, usually water. Now we're going to do a process called tempering your egg yolks. And a lot of people get kind of freaked out when I say that, like my pastry chef did the other day. Well, all you're doing is you're going to take a little ladle, and you got your egg yolk and cornstarch, so it's non-lumpy. And we don't want these eggs to turn into scrambled eggs, like I said. So we're going to take our ladle, and when this gets almost to a simmer, like there's little bubbles around the edge, but not a full boil, we're going to start ladling some of this into our egg yolk mixture and whisking. And that brings the egg yolks up to the temperature of this slowly, so it keeps it from curdling. Then when we get all of that in there, we're going to dump it back into this pot and then bring it to a simmer again. And when it comes to a, a boil or a slow simmer, it'll thicken up and that'll be our pastry cream. Um, but you do want to whisk kind of rapidly or else, you know, you're going to have problems. If you do end up with scrambled eggs, which you won't because I'm confident, don't worry about it because you can just put it in the blender, okay? Now, if you're doing this by yourself, it's kind of hard to whisk in your bowl. So I like to uh, take my towel and kind of wrap it up and make a little ring like that and put my bowl on it. And then I can kind of whisk a little more stably by myself, okay, when I'm using my other two hands. All right, so we're starting to get some little bubbles. We see some steam coming off. I'm going to start ladling. And just a little slow stream, don't get crazy. Kind of like you're making hollandaise sauce and not out of the package. And pastry creams are great. You can even uh, melt some chocolate into it when it's done and then fold in like some whipped cream and make like a chocolate mousse. It's really good. You can just serve it on its own. You can spread it between layers of cakes. Or you can fill donuts. See, so we're starting to get some steam off our eggs now. I usually end up adding probably about half of my liquid just to make sure it's really good and up to temperature. All right. I'm going to take my egg mixture, whisk it back in. And then you're going to whisk pretty constantly because it'll start to stick on the bottom on you if you don't. And you think, you know, you're sitting here whisking, nothing's going to happen, and then all of a sudden it'll thicken up on you. And I'll show you what I mean here. Okay, our cream is starting to come to a boil here. See how it's really thickening up? And no thickening agent, if it's flour, if it's cornstarch, whatever, ever comes to its thickest point until it boils. So make sure that it boils. See how thick that's getting? We got a nice little brown color from our coffee grounds. Okay. So as soon as that boils, cut it off, put it in the fridge, let it cool. I already have some done. I know you're shocked. Okay. Get my burner out of the way. And our finished pastry cream is right here. And see, it gets really thick when it cools. I know it to be really thick like that um, so it doesn't kind of run out of your donut. I got a little pastry bag right here. I just get them like at Walmart or wherever. You can buy bags of, or boxes of disposable pastry bags. I got a little tip in there. It doesn't matter what kind it is as long as it's fat enough that the cream can squeeze through it. So I'm going to put my cream into my little pastry bag here. Some people can even make pastry bags that are just like rolling up parchment paper, but I'm not that cool, so I buy mine. Okay, put some in there. 
grab our donuts that are still a little bit warm. And then just kind of squeeze the extra air out of your pastry bag there. All right, I fill mine kind of from the bottom and to the side. Just pipe it in there until it starts to kind of come out the bottom a little bit. And I like a lot of filling in my donuts, so don't be scared. Okay, so there's one that's filled. We'll do two. And kind of move your tip around from side to side and you can get some more in there because we don't mess around. Okay. Now, over here, I've got some melted chocolate. You can add a little cream to it and make it like a ganache if you want so you don't get that hard crack. It's more fudgy. I also somewhere have a little plate. So we've got coffee pastry cream in there. And now we're just going to put it in our chocolate. Pull it out. Okay. And this is a breakfast like nobody's business. Okay. Then a little powdered sugar on there. Some people who uh, eat beignets just eat them with just powdered sugar on them. But that's a little too boring for me. Okay, we've got some whipped cream. Some of that on there. Maybe a little berries. A few of those on there. Raspberries are looking gorgeous right now. I don't know why it's not like they're in season. A little mint. And that is a plate of some stupendous looking homemade donuts with mocha filling and chocolate dipped. All right, so that's our first video blog. We'll try to do better next time. Come check us out bi-weekly. Like I said, I'll try to post it when they're coming up. And uh, if you got some ideas of stuff you want to see how to make, give us a call at the restaurant and, uh, you know, give me some ideas. 528-1294. Thanks.